And just like that, it was time for our main event of the evening. It was the world heavyweight champion, Seth Rollins, defending against a freshly turned Shinsuke Nakamura. Now, this contest was much like the Women's World Championship in that I felt that this was the right competitors, but just with not a lot of time given to each of them in terms of investment for the audience. Um, with Nakamura being a heel, I think a mouthpiece for him would go such a long way. And I know that they've tried different things with Rick Boogs and, you know, a few years ago when he had his heel run with Sami Zayn as well. Uh, but those, while Sami Zayn was probably a better fit than Rick Boogs, certainly a true classic manager, I think, for Nakamura would really help his character development. As for Seth Rollins... The family man makes a lot more sense to me than that over flamboyant fashionista. The video package here did a really, really good job of setting up what was at stake for Rollins and what he's been carrying with him. Obviously, you got the Becky Lynch rub there as well and showing him as a dad on Labor Day weekend and Father's Day weekend here in Australia was, was you know, a really good touch. There was more at stake for Rollins in that light as the family man than just this, as I said, over flamboyant crazy fashion wearing laughing joker hybrid that they've sort of created over the last year before this match got going they had brilliant video packages like i said the rollins package established him really well and i actually really enjoyed the anime package that they did for nakamura as well just something different something different to build interest my only note there like i said with the women's world championship it just might be a little too late so too little too late here was was seemed to be the story of the night but they're trying something. The anime package for Nakamura obviously um, developed to overcome the language barrier um, that Nakamura has with the audience, and, and great. I think it was a, a nice cultural touch without being too corny or stereotypical, so hopefully they can do more of that moving forward. Again, the two blend really, really well. Rollins and Nakamura pair off really, really nicely. They told a great story, um, they had this ongoing thread that Rollins was carrying injuries, and particularly the back injury. The only issue was, like Raquel Rodriguez, I don't think anyone was really buying that the championship was really in jeopardy. Uh, I don't think it was the best that they offered this as the last match of the night because of that. As I said in the first video, these really could have been flipped around and we could have had Lynch and Stratus in the cage as the final match of the night, or even given the tag title change, that Steel City Street fight could have main evented as well. They deserve more in the weeks leading up to it, even in the months leading up to it. You know, we should have seen Nakamura getting wins over multiple people on Raw, the heel turn happening a little bit earlier, and you know, add things to it, add the risk. We should have seen injuries to the back, Nakamura taking people out, um, hurting their back. It just, the whole show felt a little bit thrown together. Um, however, like the tag match, as this got into the deep water, it built into a really solid contest. They blended really well together, and the finishing sequences ending with the stomp out of nowhere was brilliant. Um, really, really good. And Nakamura really picks up his game. He's fantastic heel. He's got great body language and facial expressions. When Rollins hits the stomp, his eyes roll back in the back of his head. And it's those little details that Rollins and Nakamura bring um, that elevated this match. I don't think it's the last time that we're going to see them square off, but I did feel like they needed a little bit more to get the investment from this audience on this night. Like I said, I wouldn't be surprised to see if we've got a few more um, matches out of them. We could even tease this out to Survivor Series, but they need to turn up the heat if that's what they want to do um, to be closing shows with. And look, that was the end of the night. It was all she wrote. There was no big surprises or no big turns in the final match. It was just a good, solid contest um, with a good physical story being told. Like I said, for me, the only thing that was missing was that emotional investment from the audience. And that seemed to be the story throughout the night. Um, I would obviously love to know what you guys thought, not just of this match, the Nakamura Rollins matchup. Um, do you think that this Rollins character development has finally found a sweet spot now? They found a vulnerability with Rollins, with his back, um, showing in, in more of that family man light. <clears throat> and are there other challenges at the door, including Nakamura, that's going to put his championship at risk? You know, I listen to other commentaries, particularly, um, you know, Jim Cornette, I'm a huge fan of. And he's absolutely right in that. The, one of the issues that they've created is that they're trying to put significance on Rollins as a champion, but the championship does not mean anything at the moment. They're trying to build its own legacy, but 
<clears throat> there isn't anyone outside of the WWE that doesn't see Roman Reigns as the true champion. How they overcome that, I'm not sure. I think they've added a championship when they really didn't need to. They've had the United States Championship and the Intercontinental Champion that, that could have been elevated to this spot. And so I think the story of the night could have been, there was absolutely nothing wrong, we saw some good things, but there's a lot of work still to be done. So, how would you grade it? What do we think? Um, let me know in the comments what you thought of the show overall. And there are so many things really to come out of it. W one of the really positive things I thought about the show overall was that it did give us lots of questions that we want answered, which is exactly what you want coming out of a pay-per-view like this that isn't one of the flagship events. Um, so that in itself is really, really good. The problem is we don't want to have to sit through the three hours of Raw to try and get those answers. So I, I certainly think there's enough talent there at the moment and they've got enough time to build something more interesting and with more intrigue and, and emotional investment. You know, get, try, try and build the stakes a little bit more for really all of the matches that we saw throughout the night. And there's also a lot of talent that wasn't on this card that I think could be utilized a lot better as well. And I'm sure you've got your own theories and thoughts as well. So don't be afraid to share those with me. And that's about it. That wraps up Payback for us. Guys, thank you so much for joining us um, on these videos. Like I said, I've tried something a little bit different in terms of breaking this up for YouTube. So um, hopefully you can take some time and check out the other videos on the channel. I'm always looking for more feedback. And as I say, in pretty much every video, it feels like the more that you hit like and subscribe, the more that the channel can grow. Um, and we're looking to improve each and every time. So thank you so much for joining us. And until next time, this has been One Full Theory, where we smarten up and smack down.